There is something truly cool about getting your game on your mobile device. In this lecture, we'll build our game for Apple iOS devices such as iPhone and iPad. To build to iOS, you need to be working on a Mac because the software development tools for iOS are only available on Mac. You also need to sign up as an Apple developer. There is a free option, but if you ultimately want to deploy your app on the App Store, you'll need to pay $99 a year for this privilege. And you need to install Xcode. Xcode is Apple's software development tool, and it is available for free. When you build to iOS from Unity, an Xcode project is created, which you can open in Xcode. You can then use Xcode to compile and provision the app to create an iOS application archive, or IPA file. With Xcode, you can build the IPA directly to an iOS device, or archive the IPA for distribution on the App Store through Apple's test flight uh, beta testing system, or for an enterprise ad hoc distribution. To build your app for iOS, you need to provision them. Provisioning is a secure process that allows your app to be deployed for testing and or distribution. To provision your app, you need to create a signed certificate, bundle identifier, and define the devices your app can run on for testing. The goal of provisioning is to keep iOS secure, but it is one of the biggest complications when you first start developing for iOS. Fortunately, Xcode uh, makes the process a little easier and Apple provides fairly decent documentation on how to do this. For more details, check out the upcoming reading. Our objectives for this lecture are to explore the specific iOS player settings, build for iOS, build to a device in Xcode, and discuss archiving. So let's go ahead and bring up our build settings. And we want to switch to iOS. So I'll switch to iOS and go ahead and switch the platform. And this will take a little while because um, it will actually go through and recompress all of my assets. And one of the options over here is run in Xcode as release or as debug. Um, so if you're going to be debugging your app through Xcode, you should select debug. You know, if you're just building the app to actually test on device and not run through the debugging tools, uh, you could stick with the default of release. And I'm going to go ahead and open the player settings. And uh, we're in the settings for iOS tab here. And, you know, one of the most important things is to set your orientation mode. Um, so currently my game is really built for a landscape orientation. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and turn off uh, the portrait and portrait upside down versions. Um, you know, and depending on how you want this to work, you could actually set a single like landscape left and not even have landscape right. And you could turn off, you know, auto rotation and set it to a specific orientation. Uh, but, you know, I, I always like to support, you know, both orientations of the device. So I'll leave landscape left and landscape right on and leave this with auto rotation. Uh, the status bar is the, you know, the bar that shows the time and, and your battery life and things like that. You know, most games you want to have kind of the immersive experience. Uh, so typically I would leave this checked to hide the status bar. So down under icon, uh, once again, our standard default icon propagates down here. Uh, one of the problems though on iOS is all the icons on the home screen are actually shown in a box. Uh, so if you have a transparent image, it looks a little bit odd because it actually draws a box around it. Um, so typically I do override on the iPhone and that's the reason that I provided this party icon with background. So if I drag this over here, you'll see that it's the same icon. It just has a black background, um, you know, on the home screen, it rounds the corners. Um, if I scroll down here, notice there's this option to say pre-rendered icon. If you don't check this, um, iOS will automatically kind of add a little glossy glow to the icon to create sort of a little bit of a three dimensionality to it. So you can decide if you like that effect or not. If you want to go with exactly what's shown here, you would click pre-rendered icon so it doesn't apply that glossy effect. So we're moving right along to splash image. Uh, there's a few different options here. One is you can show the Unity splash screen, uh, you know, made with Unity. You could decide to turn that on or off. Um, and then you can define what actually happens after that. So while the app is actually loading, you know, it might take a few seconds. What do you actually want to show on the screen? If you just go with the default, I believe it's just going to show black on the screen. Um, you can set this for both iPhone and iPad if you want it to behave differently. Or you can override the default, and there's a few different options here. So, for example, if I picked image and background, um, you could actually specify an image, you know, both a portrait and a landscape image to show. 
um, you know, and then whatever background color you want around that image. So I've often used this to, to show maybe, uh, you know, created by, you know, sort of message prior to the app actually starting. Remember, we created that loading scene, so the loading scene is still going to show after the app actually loads. Um, I'm just going to stick with the default for now. And you can see there's a, a few other things. There's a debugging and crash options that you can set. So then with other settings, we've looked at these before, there's various rendering settings that you can change or stick with the defaults as we'll do now. Um, but one of the very important things on a mobile platform is the identification. Um, so both on iOS and Android, we do have to set a bundle identifier, a version, and a build number. The most important of this is the bundle identifier. So typically this looks like kind of a reverse URL. So you can see I've got com.jellab.supersmartybrothers, you know, sort of the reverse of what you typically would have on a URL. If you're building to iOS in your Apple developer account, you'll actually specify the bundle identifier for your app. So yours will be unique. It won't look like mine. Um, so in my Apple developer account, I set up a bundle identifier for com.jellab.supersmartybrothers. So the version, of course, we're on version one now. You can increase this as you, you make new versions. And then the build is sort of a sub number um, within that version. So each time that I release this to the App Store, I would have to uh, change the version and change the build number. Down under configuration, some of these options are important as well, most notably the target device. So we can target just iPad, just iPhone or iPhone and iPad, which I'll do for this game. You can specify the target minimum iOS version, and you can see uh, the current version of Unity supports all the way back to iOS 6 and forward. You know, if you are doing something that only works on newer versions of the operating system, you could go ahead and increase this. I always like to, you know, support as far back as possible, so I'm going to leave this on iOS 6. The accelerometer frequency, uh, this is basically saying how often should we sample the accelerometer. Um, this game currently doesn't use the accelerometer, so I can go ahead and disable this. It might save on some battery life and possibly slightly improve performance if I disable the accelerometer. And there's various other options here. Uh, architecture, right now, it's set to universal. So, you know, on iOS, you can support the sort of old ARM v7 chip or the new ARM 64-bit uh, chip. Universal will basically build both of them within the same app. And it, it does increase the size of the app a little bit, but it allows you to run on, you know, the older architecture iOS devices out there, as well as the new uh, architecture iOS devices. And then down under optimization, uh, you know, this is how we can further optimize the performance of our game, which is typically something that you have to think about when you go to a mobile platform that's maybe not quite as powerful as the desktop platforms. Um, so one of the most notable things down here is the strip engine code. Uh, this is on by default. What this will do when turned on is it'll reduce the overall size of the app because it strips all those parts of the engine out that you're not actually using. Um, so I do recommend keeping this checked. It does increase the actual build time a little bit, but the result is worth it. Uh, the script call optimization uh, is another important optimization technique. Right now it's set to slow and safe. What this basically means is if there's a null ref, you know, if there's an error message in the code as the game is running, the game won't crash. Uh, basically, you know, that message might be logged, uh, it might be outputted to debugging, but it won't crash. Whereas fast, but no exceptions, basically if there's an exception, if there's an all ref that's thrown, uh, the game will actually crash, but the game will actually run quite a bit faster. I think it's like 10 to 15% faster. Um, so, you know, I do recommend sticking with slow and safe while you're actually testing initially. You know, once you've got all the bugs worked out, you know, definitely test as well with fast and no exceptions. And if the game works well with fast and no exceptions, that's generally what I'd recommend deploying to the app store. Um, so you can actually get, you know, the best performance possible out of your app. Uh, but if you're worried about possible bugs and the game runs okay with slow and safe, uh, you could just stick with slow and safe. So there is a lot of different settings here. Of course, you know, at the top, go ahead, open the documentation, read through, uh, you know, the specifics for iOS or whatever platform you're building for. So I'm going to go ahead and build this. Um, once again, I'll go into my builds folder and I'll create a new subfolder called iOS build. And once again, we want to just name uh, the actual build and the name of our app. So I'll choose Super Sparty Brothers and save that. And this will go through the build process as we've seen before. 
So I've got my iOS uh, build built and you can see there's a folder here and what's actually in the folder is uh, an Xcode project. So when you build for iOS, it doesn't actually build the final executable app that you're gonna put on your device. It builds an Xcode project. Um, and you could go down and find the .xcode proj file and I'll go ahead and double click on this. This will launch Xcode. Uh, so I've got my project here. Let me uh, click on it over here. And you can see my bundle identifier, version number and build are here. You can also change these here after you build out of Unity. You can specify your team. If you've got multiple uh, Apple ID developer accounts, you can specify the one that you want. And once you've get this set up, uh, you can pick what you're building for. Right now I've actually got my iPhone plugged in here. So I'll set that as my target. And then basically you just click play. And this will go through the process of you know, building the actual app that it's gonna put on the iOS device. And as long as we've got our provisioning and everything set up properly, everything should build smoothly. Um, if there is a problem, you know, a little red message will show up here, which you could click on, and then the error message will show up over here, and then you'd have to resolve that. Okay, my build is now complete. It's going through the process of installing it on the phone, and then it will actually run on the phone. And when it's running, uh, down here is basically the, the equivalent of the console which I can open up. It shows various information about uh, the app that's running. Any debug.log messages or any other th sort of error messages will actually be outputted to this area, you know, which is one nice way of actually debugging. Now, what I've just done is built for a particular device that's plugged in here. If I actually want to deploy this to the App Store, I would go under Product and then choose Archive. And what this will do is it'll build an archive version of the game uh, which I could then, you know, go ahead and push to the App Store or push to Apple's uh, test flight testing system.